everyone. Unless you've been living under a rock, you know that Amazon have created their own adaptation to The Lord of the Rings, what they call the Rings of Power. Through the recent trailer, the trailer interview which Amazon had set up, and the interviews with Vanity Fair and so on, Tolkien fans are starting to really worry that Amazon aren't getting to the heart of what Middle Earth is all about. Fans are concerned that Amazon won't respect the law, and they have certain questions like, what is the end goal for Amazon? Why are they choosing Tolkien's work to adapt? What's the bigger picture behind this? Why are fans beginning to feel that all these certain corporations who are getting these sticky little fingers into these stories that we know and love, why do fans feel that they're starting to be seen more as consumers rather than receptors of the creative process? Why is it that corporations who try to involve themselves in such ways only wind up corrupting what is good rather than actually trying to relate to the common man? So today I want to brush over very simply this Amazon adaptation, why fans feel the way they do. I want to also talk about why we continue to put our faith and trust into corporations when they seem to be completely out of touch. They don't appear to be who they say that they are and they pretend to relate to the common man by pushing certain agendas that suit their self-interest. So if you're interested, keep on watching. How does so I'm just going to come out and say that I'm not the most schooled up when it comes to Tolkien and Tolkien's Middle Earth lore. There is honestly so much to it. I don't even think I would have the patience to actually sit down for years and years and years and try to familiarize myself with it. And that in itself I think is such an important thing because it is such a vast in-depth universe. However, I can say that I am a fan of The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. My dad used to read The Hobbit book to me when I was a child and I'm doing the same with my children. I'm a fan of Peter Jackson's adaptation to The Lord of the Rings. Not so much The Hobbit, but that's another story. But speaking of, I do remember I was at school when the Hobbit auditions were about. I was really close to wanting to audition because I really enjoyed theatre at school. That was one of my subjects. And I thought, well, how cool would it be to audition for The Hobbit? But that never really came about because I wound up moving to Australia when that was happening. However, when The Rings of Power were in pre-production, I thought, hey, cool, this is an awesome opportunity to live my childhood dream. So the agency that I was with wound up having me involved in some way, shape or form. I can't really reveal what that was going to look like, but I can say that I was supposed to be part of the Rings of Power. So what happened may you ask because I'm clearly not part of this production. It was a couple of things really. Firstly there was just something off about it. I couldn't quite put my finger on it but I just felt this disconnect. Something was off. It also bothered me how Jeff Bezos had this claim over the Rings of Power like it would be his quote-unquote Game of Thrones and that threw me off because the Lord of the Rings is not the Game of Thrones. And I think this is where people started kind of asking questions about it, questioning the authenticity and the respect of Tolkien's law. But what made it even worse was when Tom Shippey, who was one of Tolkien's scholars, was actually fired from the production team because of some kind of reason. They say it's because of him revealing some information about the Rings of Power, but who, who knows really. So moving on to Several months later, Amazon releases their trailer. I'm not sure if you have seen the trailer or not. I will link it down below. But my first impressions were it was way too overpolished. It felt like it came from Disney. It almost felt like a Narnia adaptation or something. It just did not feel like Middle Earth. To me, Middle Earth feels darker and grittier and more fantastic. A little bit like Peter Jackson's adaptations. And I get that you don't want to copy it verbatim. But this in particular just was not it. That was what I first noticed. And secondly, the characters just seemed off as well. If we look at Galadriel in full plated armor, that just did not seem right to me. I was wondering what on earth was going on there. And I hope there's some kind of explanation in the series. And there was no part of the trailer which alluded to any kind of storyline or plot. Like I know you're not gonna want to give away too much but there was no suspense or no kind of 
oh, what's going to happen? It just seemed like theatrical shots of people cosplaying. <laughs> Part of Amazon's advertising for this is that they had sent people from multiple different countries to this trailer premiere. After the premiere, these individuals would be interviewed to see how they like the trailer and what they're looking forward to in the series. This trailer premiere was set in a very interesting way where it seemed like every country were kind of reading off a script as they were all acting in the same manner. It was as though when a new scene came up on the screen, the director would say, now look like you're in awe. So it didn't really seem authentic at all. And if you were using this as advertising, then I get it, it's fine. You're going to have people pretending like they're really enjoying something to sell a product. However, what made this seem really inauthentic was they called these actors super fans. This whole super fan situation has really rubbed people the wrong way because when these individuals were interviewed after watching this premiere, they seemed to not know anything at all about talking about the law or anything of that matter. They just seemed that they were picked as influencers off of YouTube based on their YouTube following. So in a way I was like, cool, look, we've got all these influencers coming to watch our cool trailer premiere. As though it's like, let's turn this into a trend. The young, cool, hip influencers are watching it and they're loving it. So these super fans were really kind of exposing themselves as paid actors or as people who weren't really all that much super fans when the interview afterwards was based solely within the character's identity rather than the law, rather than the plot, rather than where are Amazon going to take this. And especially the British premiere, the whole time the people were talking about identity. So this clip was ratioed and received so much backlash that Amazon wound up taking it down. It's like no wonder YouTube have gotten rid of the thumbs down and you need an extender to be able to see actually how many people dislike things and this is why. The aftermath of this trailer premiere was even more hilarious. Vanity Fair had conducted an interview with the producers and mm, is all I can say. So the first big red flag is when the producers essentially admitted to create a story that Tolkien never told. And fans have a problem with this because you're telling a story, you are creating an adaptation of Tolkien's work. Now the reason why they're doing it this way is because they don't actually have the rights to the second age which is what the Rings of Power is set in. So it kind of makes it a little difficult for them to follow the law down to the T. However if you're not going to have access to the law then what is the sense in making a Lord of the Rings adaptation set in the second age where you're not actually going to follow law of the second age. It just seems like an excuse to wear the clothes of Tolkien while telling a different story. Another red flag is that they want to mix up the characters a little bit. So with the likes of Galadriel, for example, I mentioned about how she was wearing full plate armor and she was this warrior princess in this trailer. The producers admitted that they were going to change characters like Galadriel. Galadriel is going to be this super cool kick-ass warrior woman who has all this pent-up anger and rage from being this young impressionable elf who just wants to go out there and kick evil's ass. But as we know, Tolkien describes Galadriel to be this ethereal force. She doesn't need to wear plated armor and go out there all swords blazing to be one of the most powerful beings in Middle Earth. And there, of course, is the physical attributes to these characters as well, which seems quite superficial. However, Tolkien wrote in such depth of these characters and described them in a very deliberate way. For example, elves having long hair. And so why are the elves in the Amazon's adaptation having short hair? And then, of course, you have the dwarf queen who doesn't have a beard. Now, clearly, dwarf women all have beards. And they can be so easily confused with dwarf men. But this character looks like she is a queen in a different fantasy story. And while it is quite controversial to say, but many fans take issue with this, Tolkien's Middle Earth was based in Northern Europe, in England. It was a story created as English mythology. However, the producers are taking this modern approach to it where they value that it should reflect the real world. It felt only natural to us that an adaptation of Tolkien's work would reflect 
what the world actually looks like. But would Tolkien really want the Middle Earth universe to reflect our modern world? Peter Jackson has a different take on it. There are certainly themes Tolkien felt were important. We made a promise to ourselves at the beginning of the process that we weren't going to put any of our own politics, our own messages, or our own themes into these movies. What we were trying to do was to analyse what was important to Tolkien and to try to honour that. In a way, we're trying to make these films for him, not for ourselves. So the thing about Tolkien, which has fans riled up, is what actually Tolkien valued. Why did he spend decades writing this incredibly complex universe? Was it for a modern adaptation? It wasn't. Tolkien had despised allegory within his stories, and he was incredibly protective over his works. Even when others wanted to create an adaptation, Tolkien was really strict on how they would do it. He had written pretty, I wouldn't call them aggressive letters, but letters down to the point of rejecting people in a very Tolkien way. Tolkien was very, very deliberate within this Middle Earth universe. Everything that was written down was supposed to be there for a good reason. It wasn't just, oh, he's just creating this cool fantasy novel for people to enjoy. This was him creating a mythology for England. And this is what people are very concerned with, that Amazon's going to completely disrespect Tolkien's values and the law, while simultaneously calling these fans bigots because these fans are aiming criticism towards them. It's like they can be free from criticism because if you disagree with the way that they go about telling these stories, as if it were attack on people's genders, ethnicities, sexual orientations, or the fact that it's not reflecting a modern progressive world, like it's a bad thing that people cannot enjoy this fantastical world set in a time period well before our modern age. I know for a fact that this has nothing to do with ethnicity or gender or whatever. There is most certainly a place for so many different kinds of people playing fantastical roles. For instance, I believe that Morgan Freeman would make such an amazing wizard. And these Tolkien fans see that too. They have suggested, wouldn't it have been cool to bring in people of different ethnicities to play the Easterlings, because the Middle Earth universe is full of people with different skin tones. But you could get so creative and focus on these different races in Middle Earth that Tolkien didn't spend too much time on. But it most definitely feels that Amazon had no interest in creativity, creating an adaptation of Tolkien's work, that their aim is to push a certain agenda. Amazon most certainly sees these fans as consumers and customers rather than fans. Most corporations see people as this. And so they're not going to be able to actually create anything that the common man can relate to because they themselves are completely disconnected from the common man. They wear this cloak of self-righteousness while hiding away the things that are evil, the things that are criminal. I mean, just look at how these corporations wear the next thing to care about as this badge, as this piece of clothing. They can create these certain kinds of advertisements where they care so much about diversity and what have you, while hiding this dark aspect to them where they may have taken advantage of slavery, of childhood labor, of human trafficking. These corporations don't actually care about the common man. They don't actually know how to relate to the common man. They don't know how to create. That is why Amazon was bombarded with this one message. Evil cannot create anything new. They can only corrupt and ruin what good forces have invented or made. And in saying this, I think that corporations are a good reflection on how we want to be because we are capable too of this good and this evil, this shadow and this light. As we see in the story of the Lord of the Rings, that battle in yourself between the good and the evil, we see Frodo battling this. And so it's not corporations who are the only ones who do have this sense of corruption, but it's ourselves. It's a good self-reflection tool of who we want to be. That's what separates us from corporations. Corporations don't try to address that aspect, but as humans, as the common man, we have the choice 
to actually look at that and decide for ourselves how we want to be. What do you guys think? Do you think that Tolkien fans are just being whiny? Do you think that they have a point in wanting to keep something that is sacred to them? Please let me know in the comments. But for now, I hope you guys have a good day, night, morning, evening, wherever you are in the world. And I'll see you guys all again for the next video. Bye.